everyone, my name is Debbie. Welcome to my channel. I have been reselling for over 16 years and today I would like to share my very simple yet highly efficient and effective inventory system. One thing that I love about my inventory system is it has a backup. Say you accidentally put the wrong inventory number on an item or you put it in the incorrect bin, my system has a backup plan. So even if it's labeled incorrectly, I can still find it very quickly. I would like to share that with you today because it will save you so much time if you have a good inventory system. Before we get started, I need to announce the winner of the swimsuit giveaway. It's just like a 38 second clip, but I wanted to tell all of you that entered Thank you so very much for all of your nice, sweet, supportive comments. You guys are absolutely wonderful. And I thought, I want everybody to win. And it, that led me to thinking, oh, I could do this again so that more people can win because I'm pretty good at finding a lot of inventory at a good price, more than I can list myself, especially adding in YouTube now. So I thought I could do something like this once a month where I make a little box of inventory and give it away to a viewer as my way to tell you guys thank you so much for how wonderful you are and supportive. So stay tuned and I will have another one. I'll show you the clip of when I picked the drawing. I said I would do it at exactly 9 a.m. So I screen recorded and I waited till the clock turned nine o'clock and you can see it on my phone on the dot and hit for it to select a winner. And if you are the winner, now where you would like me to send it, if I don't hear from you today, sometime today, then I will send a message also. So here is the clip and congratulations. I used a website that picks random YouTube winners that I learned about by watching a YouTube video and I pasted the link for that specific video. Then I had it filter by comments. I put the word win in, grabbed the comments, and then I just waited. If you look up at the top, it shows the time. It was 8.59, so I was ready to go, push the button right when the clock turned nine o'clock, and the winner is Gigi Oliver. Congratulations. Congratulations to Gigi Oliver and just email me your address where you would like to send it. And if you didn't win, thank you so much for participating. And I will have another giveaway in probably like a month, maybe on the 15th of each month or something like that. We'll see how it goes. So if you are not subscribed and would like to join in also, hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell also so that it will let you know when I release a new video. If you are reselling, you need an inventory system and you do not want to wait until it gets so overwhelming that you're spending hours every day searching for items. You have clutter everywhere and it becomes a headache. Start early. If you are at the beginning of your reselling journey, start when you have one item because then you can build upon it. You can make it part of your routine. Why do you want to have an inventory system? Number one, it will save you a lot of time. You only have a certain amount of time each day to work on reselling and it is much better to use that time doing something productive where you can make money rather than searching for items everywhere. <laughs> Number two, it reduces stress. It is so stressful when you sell an item and you can't find it anywhere. You have no idea where it is or you think you might know where it is and then it is not there. And I say that because that happened to me in the beginning. When I started, it was 2004. There was not YouTube. There was not anyone that was telling me how to do things. I was a first grade teacher before that. I didn't know how to run a business. And so I just had everything stacked up. I had like an inventory purchase right at the beginning where I bought like 250 pairs of jeans. Well, when I went to try to find them, I remember one night looking through every pair for hours and could not find them. And that's when my inventory system started. Reducing your stress is key. 
Number three, you want to be a trusted seller and you want to remain in good standing on whatever platform you are selling on. If you cancel items, don't send items, then you will be negatively impacted on that platform. You will get a defect. And if you get too many, it can really hurt your rating on your platform. If you have unhappy customers, they can also leave negative feedback on some platforms or you can get low star ratings on Poshmark. So if you're putting in the work to buy the item, list the item, you want to be able to follow through on that transaction and be able to make money, not have to deal with problems. And number four, it reduces clutter. Before I had an inventory system, it just felt like clutter everywhere. <laughs> I was just sticking things in random places and it was just not effective at all. But I learned just a couple months into reselling how important it was to have an inventory system. And my system has evolved over 16 years and it's what works best for me. So you can take what you want from mine and maybe incorporate things from other sellers or ideas that you come up with that work best for you. So the first thing is most of my items are stored in these buckets. And then I have a inventory number on the bucket. So this is the one I just started yesterday. It's bucket 127 and I have the date right here, March the 18th, 2021. So when I am listing my item, I will usually have my bucket right next to me where I can see the bucket number. The main places that I sell are eBay and Poshmark. Both of them have a custom SKU area, which I will insert pictures on one of these sides where you can see exactly where it's at. Those custom SKU areas allow you to view that information, but the buyer cannot see that. So or I can just see it. Sometimes I will still put um, a little bit of the information in the listing also, but in the private area for me to see, I will put Put where I bought it at. So if it was Goodwill, I'll put GW. Then I'll put the date that I'm listing it, which this one would be March 18th, 2021. I will put how much I paid for it. That way, if someone sends an offer to me, I don't have to go look up a spreadsheet or anything to find out how much I have into it when I'm considering. Maybe I'm not even home. I can just quickly look and see what I paid for it, how long I've had it in my inventory, and consider right then if I want to accept that offer or not. And then, of course, I have the bucket number. I list my item and then I pre-package it most of the time. I've struggled, I've gone back and forth. I always pre-packaged my items for years and years and years because it stays really nice and neat and it's easy to find the things when they're all pre-packaged and it makes shipping just super fast. But then I thought, oh, I don't want to use this plastic. I want to do better for the environment. And so I started using the craft paper. Well things got really, really wrinkled and I started spending a lot of time steaming items. Something would sell and it would look awful and I could not send it out like that. Most of the time I am finding now that I pre-package the things that go into bins. That brings me to the part where what happens if I put the wrong number on it. I'm listing bucket 127 and I accidentally am typing so fast, I put in bucket 172. Then six months from now, the item sells, I go to bucket 172 and it's not there. I panic, oh my gosh, <laughs> what am I going to do? In the past, I would go through all of my items and I have maintained over a thousand items current for years and years. Right now I think I have 1100 and something in eBay and that doesn't count multiple quantity listings and I have around 700 active listings on Poshmark and that also does not include multiple quantity listings. So if you have to go through one by one and look for an item, it will take hours. <laughs> so this is what I did and I have improved on it preparing this video. I thought, what if someone does not want to do this exact system? So I figured out an even better way. 
But what I do is every day when I'm listing, I write down what I'm listing. And I just enjoy doing that and I calculate, okay, I'm gonna make $10 on this. And I write down the bucket number, I write down what I'm listing and how much money I think I'm going to profit and then I'll do a little tally. And so each day I'll have a goal and, um, and it just is fun for me to write it down and see my progress and I have my bucket number. So say, I listed that item and it is not in bucket 172 because it's really in bucket 127. I can go to my notebook, find that date, and I have the bucket number written down. I can find it that way. But say you don't want to do that. This is what I just thought of. Um, I will just put the date on the bucket. <laughs> so say I can't find it. I go to bucket 172 and it is not there. Well, my listing in the custom SKU says the date that I listed it on. So it says right there, it is 31821. So now what I'll do is I'll just go to my buckets, find that date, and there, there's the item. So even if your number is wrong, that is okay. You can still find your item. And that has saved me more times than you would know because sometimes I do, I'm typing so fast, I type the number wrong and I hear other resellers on their inventory, they'll say, be so careful that you put it in the right bucket because if you don't, you will spend so much time looking for it. So that made me feel good because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not the only person <laughs> that does that. So this will save you from having to go through on those times where you accidentally put the wrong number. You can just find it quickly. The other thing that I do is I do not just fill bins randomly. I go in sequential order, bucket to bucket, because that helps me be able to find things in the event that I inventoried them wrong. The What I do is say I am on bucket 90 and I'm pulling an item to ship and I'm like, oh, bucket 90 is getting kind of low. I'm going to combine it with either bucket 89 or bucket 91. And I'll put a little clip in showing you how to do that because I did that just yesterday morning. I noticed one was low, so I can find the two buckets. This is an example of some of my buckets that I have combined. You can see that when I combine them, I just write the number on the bucket so I can tell which SKU numbers are in each bucket. I was shipping and I got something out of container 98 and I noticed that it was really low. So what I do is I will check the bucket right before it, 97, or the bucket right after it, 99, so it stays in order and I will see if there's room and there was. So I take my items out of 98 and put them into 97, then on the label on the outside of the bucket, I will put plus 98 in Sharpie. That way I know if I sell an item and it has 97 or 98 on the SKU number, that is the bucket that it will be in. Then I take the label off of the old container and put a new label on it and that became bucket 127. So now I have an empty bucket ready to fill up with new inventory that I am listing now. The reason why I do this and not just fill in random empty buckets is because most often if I have the wrong number on it, say it says bucket 127 and I go to 127 and it's not there, it's usually always in bucket 126 because my brain is still thinking about what I had just previously listed. And even though I have bucket 127 right in front of me to look at, I just accidentally put 126. So most of the time, my go-to is just quickly look at the bucket that was right before, and usually it's in there. Then if not, I will look at the date when I listed it and find it by date. That's it. Now, anything that can fit in the plastic container, I have in plastic containers. Then on shoes, I have an area just on top of a dresser that I have stacked up all of some liquidation shoes that I had. Then I have a couple closets that I have them in. And what I'll do is in the custom SKU, I will put 
where it is exa at exactly. And that's the same for coats and jackets. I'll keep those hanging in a closet. So I will put, our workout room has a big closet. And so I will put WO room or workout room, and then I'll know, go to the workout room. And then if it's shoes on a shelf, I will put workout room closet shelf four. Or if I have breakables, I have a cabinet that I keep all of my breakables in. And I don't have a lot of breakables, so it's just fine. I will put that it's in the cabinet or I just sold something and I will put that up. It was um, a set of breakable plates. So I have them in that breakable cabinet in a drawer. And so I'll put what drawer it's in. That way I don't have to look through all of the drawers <laughs> and everything because I'm trying to reduce as much as possible the amount of time that I'm taking to gather my inventory. So now I can have a huge list, 20 or 30 things, and I have those items pulled in minutes. It's so fast if you have a good system in place. Now, what if you have similar items in the same bucket? Sometimes that can make things difficult to find. So what I do if I have a couple items that are very similar, I will assign them an A, B, C, D, E, something like that. So if I have a two black swimsuits, I'm listing them together. I know these might be difficult to find. First of all, I will put the label where it's clearly visible. If there's a tag, um, I will always have those showing. Then I'll just grab a Sharpie and I'll put on there 127.B. That will be in my custom SKU. That will be on the back. If I sell something and I see that it's 127.B or .C or .E, I know pay special attention to that one because there are other items in there that look similar. So that alerts me to be really careful and make sure that I have the correct item. The other thing that I do, I do um, quite a bit of liquidation also. So I will have a lot of multiple quantities. I have one bucket that is full of the same dress and I'll show you a picture of that. And so I just, within it, I separated them in boxes. So I have all of the size extra smalls in one bag. Then I put a small box with all of the smalls in it. Then another box with all of the mediums in it. So I can quickly find them and I'm not having to sort through sizes. Or if they're smaller items, I will get a gallon Ziploc baggie and put them all within that baggie. And that makes it so that I can keep my items in sequential order of when I have listed them so that it is not a nightmare if I lose an item and I can still make sure that there are ways that I can quickly find them and not have to sort through a lot of things that are very similar. So that has worked very well for me just having divisions within the container when needed. I tried for a little while to just fill buckets randomly and go, oh, there's a little bit of space in bucket 474. I'm going to put three items in there today and then go to this other bucket. That is not time efficient for me at all. <laughs> that is a lot more trouble than it's worth. I also do not keep a spreadsheet with my inventory numbers where I look it up that way. I tried that also for a little while and what I found was it took me so much time and uh, I tried that when my kids were little and maybe I had 20 minutes in the morning to pull anything that sold overnight. Well, when I was doing that, I was spending my whole time trying to look up the spreadsheets and enter things and it was just too much extra time for me. So I don't do any of that, but there are sellers that have amazing <laughs> spreadsheets. And so if you want those, they are definitely out there. So for me, I, I do not find that necessary my simple little way that I inventory items works great for me. I will show you a view of my inventory room and it is not super pretty. <laughs> it is just 
a lot of buckets, but it works for me. And all of the writing on the containers, it's not super neat or there, there are definitely other sellers that I've seen inventory rooms that are beautiful. And I thought, oh, I could make this my before and do an after, but you know what? It works for me. And the most important thing for me is being fast, efficient, being able to find my items quickly so that I can spend my time creating more listings, going sourcing, and doing things that will make more money for me. So this is my system. If you have any additional tips for everyone else, if you want to put them in the comments below, that is great because we can all learn from each other and maybe provide some, some information that I didn't think of. And if there are any questions that I can answer, please ask if you enjoyed this video and would consider giving me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it so much because I am a new YouTuber and every time you comment or give me a thumbs up or subscribe, it tells eBay, I mean, not eBay, <laughs> it tells YouTube to put my videos out there a little bit more and I love being able to teach and help people. So it would mean so much to me to get out there a little bit more and be able to share the information that I have learned. Thank you so much and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.